What's going on guys? So in today's video, we're working on this Dodge Challenger SRT Hellcat. So I'm pretty excited because in the last video, we got a ton of wiring done. We got all the engine bay wiring done. We ended up putting in the brake booster. We got the dash in. We got a lot of that wiring configured. We also had to repair some wiring over there. There was one plug that we had to repair. Got our center console in and we needed to pick up a battery. So I went ahead and I've got a battery right now that at least holds a charge. So let's go ahead, throw it in there and let's see what happens. All right, you guys ready? Let's see what happens. I hear a little bit of spark. Nothing back here yet. Let's look. Oh, our cluster is lit up. Check that out, you guys. So we got some action on the cluster. I don't see anything happening across our touch screen, but that's no surprise that thing was cooked. So that's the original touch screen. This is actually the original cluster, but that is illuminating. Um, I need to get the steering wheel configured and I don't have any of that stuff, so I don't have any turn stock stuff. But let's see, let's open up the door, see what kind of action. I don't have the headliner in either with any of the harness, so any ambient lightings. Oh. What? <laughs> that, I don't know if that's stock. I don't know if I like that or I think it's cheesy. Look at that. So it's got a Hellcat logo on the bottom of the door. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, you guys. I think that's actually kind of cool. I'm, I don't know if that's the racer in me coming out, but I don't know. Comment down below in the comments. Did you leave that? I actually think it's kind of cool. It's got one over there, too. Look. You can see it shining on the door still. <laughs> so, oh, my God. So this thing has power to it. Um, let's see. I don't think because I don't have a key. Yeah, see, it's just beeping because it's mad. It doesn't have a key. So see how this is flashing? Look push key button with fob to start well i don't think we're starting anything but it's mad that it doesn't have the key i don't see any action on my center console so let me see there might be something that needs to be plugged in there i don't this is just for that this goes to the airbag module we still got to do but i don't have any action on my center console so something's up with that we'll figure that out um let's see if we got lights I don't know the front light's in, but... Oh, well, it's responding to it. It says light's on. Let's see what we got. Close this so I don't have to listen to it. So, and I don't have the trunk plugged in yet. I guess we could plug in the trunk harness. I don't even know where it plugs in. So all the lights in the trunk probably won't illuminate until this gets plugged in. I don't even know where that plugs into, to be honest. Somewhere over here? I don't know. Oh, is that it? Uh, I'm guessing that has to go all the way up. Let's see. We just chopped all this stuff off the old harness. I guess we might as well plug it in. Screw it. Okay. So let me unplug the old stuff because the old trunk was obliterated. So I just cut a lot of the stuff. Plus for the camera. Let's see. Uh, that looks like a camera. It's my first time owning one of these Charger Challengers, you guys, so bear with me while I figure out where everything plugs into. That one's just a camera, I know that much. I gotta figure out how to plug this one in. If there's a little pigtail hanging out or what for the tail light. Is that it? I don't know. I might have to take this off. Whatever. For now, who cares? We don't have to do that, but check it out. Oh, we do have the taillights, all right. So we don't have the center section yet until we plug that in, but that's a start. We got taillights. Once we end up plugging the trunk in, we'll get the rest of that. That's so badass, you guys. So let me see. I guess I'll turn off the lights. That's cool, the cluster works, but our Uconnect definitely does not. Let me see if I can program a key for it, because I don't have a key for it, and that would be nice to have a key so that we can actually power up the system. Maybe I can operate the windows. I think one of the windows is actually shattered, so I'll probably have to replace that, but I don't know. Let me program it, or try to program it, and see what we got. All right, so check this out, you guys. I just programmed the red key. I'm not gonna show you guys how to program a key, because there's already enough issues out there with people uh, taking these things when they're not supposed to, so I'm gonna keep uh, that stuff off the internet for sure, but anyways, Keys programmed, we got a brand new red key, SRT, and look, she unlocks, she locks. There's no horn, because we don't have a horn connected, but you can see the doors go up. And we get the flashing. Check it out. That is so cool. So, 
Uh, pretty excited about that. Let's do a couple more things. Let's see what happens if we try to key on now. I have not tried this yet. Obviously, it's not gonna be starting or anything, but let's see. Oh, well, yeah, we get accessory. Okay, look. So that, oh, this actually does work. What the hell? <laughs> the screen actually works. <laughs> no way. That is pissed off. All right, let me close the door so it's not dinging at you guys. That's crazy. Start vehicle. Well, we definitely can't start the vehicle. Tire pressures. I don't have any buttons, so I can't move the cluster around. We've got no gas in it. I wonder if that's why, you guys. I wonder, because the gas gauge definitely is connected, but you can see there's like barely any gas in it. I wonder if that's what saved this thing from completely burning down, the fact that this thing was empty, empty. Um, all right, so let's see if we can click it over one more into the run position, even though there's no engine. Oh, we can actually. Okay. This thing is gonna be hella pissed off. Uh, Anti-theft code, no. Our blower works. So let's see. What the heck is that gonna be? I definitely don't have that. Sometimes they usually, uh, come back themselves. I mean, cause it's from this vehicle, but man, that sucks. I either have to get the code or once we actually have the engine, look, service transmission, this thing's losing its mind right now, but. So yeah, fuel low. Oh, we got a little more fuel, but yeah, she's pretty much empty. But yeah, that is, this thing is real mad here. But yeah, our blower motor works. You can see there. But can't really do a whole lot here. Let's turn this off completely because our battery's not in the greatest shape as it is. Let's see the window. Oh, we do have a window. We've got one window. I don't think we have one on this side. No. Oh. No. I can hear the motor going, but there's no actual glass. Look at that, red key in use. So it sees our red key at least. So we've got one window, it's definitely tinted. Let's see. So I need to put a window in that one, but I kinda already knew that. Sheesh, we got tint, boys. Tint. I still gotta adjust this door a little bit. Looks like I don't quite have it lined up, but. Not bad, not bad. Not that it really matters, we don't have windshield anyways. Okay, so this is one of the weird things that I've experienced before with these newer systems is when I blew up a transmission in the Helcota up there, the Hellcat Swap Dodge Dakota, I could not turn the engine off. And my transmission was in pieces, but it wouldn't let me turn it off. Same way this is doing, see look. Service transmission, blah, blah, blah. Until you reach a desired location, you may not be able to shift. Like you can't turn the vehicle off right now, even if you hold it. It will not let you turn the vehicle off. So only way I know to fix this is to pull the battery. So, oh, also I did plug this in, so now this works. So we got four ways. Obviously our climate works. Um, but yeah, no way to turn the vehicle off. So, see vehicle not in park. So let me see if I can uh, potentially, I wanna reset this because sometimes these will come back after they've been connected for a while. But, yeah, I mean, it works. It's just, maybe I need a new like screen overlay. I think you can get just the clear piece because obviously the touch seems to work. Let's see, is it gonna switch to vents? Looks like it might work. All right, so I'm going to disconnect the battery because that needs to be disconnected in order to get this thing to turn off. Let's see. Yeah, it's still on. So I'll disconnect it. Also, let's see if we can connect our trunk. Be kind of nice. I gotta figure out where the plug is on this thing. On this tail light bar, there's gotta be a plug somewhere. I gotta find it though. All right, so I had to watch a video on how to take this off because it was so weird. So there's these here, I believe there's four of them. One, two, 
well, three, four, they're popped up now. And then there's two huge push pins here. And then there's these little plastic trim pieces that go here that pop out of here. And then there's a torque screw there. And same deal on the other side right there. Torque screw right there. And then the tail light comes out and you have to take the tail light out to be able to plug it in crazy enough. So now that I figured that out, I can put this on properly. <laughs> Okay, well I started to put the uh, trunk latch on and then I realized that would be a really stupid idea since we're not keeping the battery on it attached so I would have to climb through the trunk every time to reattach the battery. So I took it back off and I think our tail light should work or a center tail light, let's see. So if we got battery power now. Now if we hit our running lights, I think. See what we got. Hey, that looks a little better. Hell yeah. License plate works too. License plate light works too. All right. Let's try hitting the key again for fun. See if we get our stereo at all. I doubt it, but let's try. I can't believe that thing freaking works. Let's see if she boots up. I'm guessing it's probably gonna be locked out. Radio locked. Yeah, we're still stuck on the code. All right, so it is the next day and I actually did get the radio code. So now I have the radio code, let's plug this in. I kind of want to hear the stereo. It's got this Harman Kardon million speaker stereo system I'm kind of curious so let's reconnect this and see the other reason why i want to do this too is not just for the fun fact of messing with the stereo but i also want to see if the touch screen fully works because i think you can order just the screen portion of that so if the whole thing if i can turn this thing on and activate it and everything works then i think i can actually order this and be able to replace it so we'll see what happens here so, uh, I guess I need the key. Key's over there. We could probably dress in a lot of these wires because there's probably a lot of unhappy stuff right now. But here we go, we got the red key. I'll close the door in just a second because this thing's gonna be dinging in just a second. Well, there we go. Let's see. So our screen's booted up. Oh, look at that! <laughs> Our tire pressures actually show, but since we're missing the one, it's got nothing, but the rest of them all show. That's pretty cool. All right, so radio locked, and then I gotta put my code in. All right, so radio enabled, so now we have the radio with the code. Maybe I'll connect my phone here. All right, well, the radio unlocked, but the battery is too weak right now. I didn't get a new battery, I just had one kicking around. But I have it on the trickle charger, we'll see if it comes back, but the power keeps cutting out, it's so low, if you guys remember the voltage on that one, but it's so low that it just keeps turning off. So while that charges, and we still have a lot of other things to do, I got my hood latch cable, so I'm gonna pass that through. Not that we even have a hood mounted to matter, but I figured I might as well, right there, that hole down there get this passed through so that that's in there. And I also have this windshield washer bottle. So that way I'm not like, I got 5 million parts all over the shop and it's making me a bit crazy. So the more stuff bolted to this thing, the less I have to worry about shuffling around all the time. So let's get these two things in there. Okay, so latch is in there. That was probably one of the easiest things I've ever done on this vehicle. So we got this boot pulled through. And I don't really know where this even routes, but I'm sure it goes through here. And then once the course port's on here, you guys get the idea. But I have to figure out what the official routing is for that. Now let's go ahead and get this washer bottle. All 
All right, De Dennis showed up. You got a pretty sick shirt. I kind of like that shirt. I should get me one of those. Those are discontinued, actually. Those are, those are limited edition. It's like one use only. <laughs> you can't say it on camera. Those are limited. Those are limited edition shirts. I discontinued those. But Dennis brought us a battery, and it's a Honda battery. I don't know how that how that'll work, but did you see the little thing? Check check this out. Did you see the floor? It's kind of rice, but I kind of like it. I'm not gonna lie. You are rice. Like look at that. That's kind of cool, no? Thoughts? I think Mini Coopers do that too. <laughs> this is a heavy <laughs> Mini Cooper. <laughs> All right, so let's see if now that we got a real battery, if this will actually work. See, you can't turn it off though, because the transmission's missing. Uh -huh. I have to yank the battery just to turn it off. Oh, I gotta put the code in again. Okay, so we got our radio working, but. This a problem. What? What? Go get the needle nose. Wow. Where's your blades at, bro? It's fine. It's fine. It's because the car's not in pack. <laughs> so, you need a new one, I guess, right? Where are the blades? What blades? The blades that come out of the bottom of the fuse? You don't need a blade. This what is all in the fuse box? No, this is it. It's a, a smart fuse. It's a little guy. Is it? Yeah. What the fuck is this thing? Garbage. It's garbage. Burned it out. is garbage. Let's get a new one. Yeah. Did it? All right. We might have a fuse. Let's see. All right. Back to the studio. Who knows what else is probably obliterated. Chrysler, get that garbage out of here. Except, don't make me put the thing. You bastard. All right, I gotta put the code in again. All right, well, it says it's playing, but we don't hear nothing. Where's our freaking music? This is garbage. All right, so the volume, I can turn up the volume, but I got nothing. It says it's playing, jukebox hero. I don't hear no jukebox. All right, so it's the next day. Me and Dennis tried to figure out the stereo, but I don't know what's going on with it, but obviously it's not a necessity right now. So we couldn't get it to work. We changed the fuse. I probably gotta go through it and there's a lot of stuff that's disconnected. So maybe once we start connecting some more stuff, it'll all of a sudden start working, but it's not like we need to listen to the radio right now, but I just thought it'd be cool and exciting, but hey, it has other plans for us. But I just picked up some stuff for this, you guys, and I have to see it. So I just took the Eco Diesel over there and we got some stuff and picked it up. So let me grab it because this is really going to set this thing off. So there we go, we got the Hellcat Swap Ram. And if you guys notice, we shuffled some stuff around. So we got the Hellcoda, the Hellcat Swap Dodge Dakota. Scat Pack Dakota is up there because we're measuring for the drive shaft. But I got some stuff here, guys. I got a headliner because the old one was baked. So let me get that out. And I don't know if you guys can tell what that is, but I am super excited about that. All right, so here's our headliner. I just got a used headliner and uh, the one with the sunroof. I don't know if this one's as optioned as our vehicle is. I gotta double check the harness that I took out. Our original headliner was all melted up here, but I seem to remember, I think mine had, I wanna say speakers or something. I could be wrong, but I maybe it was just these things. I remember taking off these weird boxes off of my other headliner, but I guess maybe they're just lights. Anyways, either way, we'll get to the bottom of that, but here's our headliner, so that's one more piece of puzzle. And then check this out, you guys. I've got our hood, but I'm not gonna show you guys which one I got just yet. Let's uh, let's fit the front bumper and stuff on here so we can get the whole picture of how it's gonna look. Okay, so before I get the bumper on, I gotta put this course report on. So the uh, so I picked this one up as well. Again, I ended up getting it with the front fender, so that worked out since I don't have to paint it orange. The old one, if you guys remember, was all melted over here. So let's go ahead, bolt this up. I'm not gonna like completely, completely finalize this. I kind of just wanna have it here so I can hang the bumper. Reason being is to put our engine in, it's probably gonna be a heck of a lot easier to have it like this, but I kind of wanna just hang it since I've got parts laying all over the place in the shop and this will kind of tuck things in and until we actually get the engine done to put it in, at least we can kind of look at a car that looks like a car and not a shell.
Damn. Tell me what you guys think about that in the comments below. So I ended up picking up this demon hood and I could lie to you guys and tell you that it's an OEM piece, but it is a aftermarket reproduction hood, but it's actually in aluminum. So it's made of the same material. And the crazy part is <clears throat> it still has the functional hood scoop here. So we got that in here. You can even see SRT. So it's gonna work just like the factory one. Our air box will be here and it's gonna drive air into there. So <clears throat> I'm pretty happy with how that all looks and turns out. Only one thing is there was a bunch of revisions on this uh, bezel that goes here, even on the OEM demon hood. There was several revisions on the trim piece for the actual OEM demon hood. So I wanna see if I can get my hands on one of those OEM trim pieces because this one fits pretty decent, but I think if I got the actual OEM plastic insert, it would fit even way better. So still got some alignment stuff, but overall fits pretty decent. Super, super happy with it and happy with the look of this. I think this is gonna really set the car off. Let me know though what you guys think of this look down below. Okay, one more small feat, you guys. So we've got the stereo working and we also got Apple CarPlay working. So pretty cool. One more little thing. I wasn't sure what was going on, but I had to do a bit of programming and uh, ended up figuring it out, but she's back in order. So I do have one other thing I'll show you. I did find some seats. So I ended up getting seats and I ended up getting the same kind of uh, cloth or I guess suede or Alcantara, whatever we're calling that. And, but the only thing is these rain gutters here. I gotta figure out what we're doing here. I also am missing this piece here. I gotta get this little trim piece, lots of little things. But what I wanna get onto now is I wanna kinda just button up the interior before we go back to the engine and mechanical aspect. So we took everything out. We've had this thing completely stripped. And before the new carpet goes back in, there's these little plastic things. One of them's right there. They go down underneath the carpet. So I wanna get those in and then we'll put our carpet back in. And then I actually went and picked up some seats. Well, Dennis actually picked them up, right? Dennis picked them up. So we've got seats to go in here. So that way we might have a somewhat of an interior. So let's get to it. So this ugly thing goes up in here, connects to our HVAC. Dennis has the same little ugly matching thing. And this one goes up in the middle. Somewhere around here. We'll figure this all out, get it in. Hey, look. It hooks from the top. So there's a little slot in the firewall. Oh, okay. Just a little, right here. Yeah. A little slippity doo dah. Like that? Yeah, it's How pretty. How over to go? Uh, Guess I'm over this E cable, right? Yeah, it goes to where the screw would hold it, but doesn't. You know what I mean? See that like nut that's on the floor? That lines up with there. This? Yeah. With the broken piece that it doesn't have no more. You know? Okay. So that. Was it going to here? Yeah, it slots. Oh, uh, yeah. okay. Yeah, it just chills there. Alright. The carpet will hold it in place. I'll try to get the Or if you can hook it or something. Alright, and then I think we messed up. I gotta put the carpet over top of this and under that. Hey, check it out. We got the carpet and I already made it dirty. Got a center console, it's actually secured. Put our glove box back in. Then it's got his dirty carpet in. It is a good day in the dirty kitty. So, uh, let's go ahead and grab our seats. We're gonna just toss them in here and get a little, get a little uh, perspective. A little, seat time. a little point of view action with no engine. Like a little sim racing action. <laughs> Be all right, we'll check it out. <laughs> all right, let's grab them. Hey, there's the seats. So these are the seats, you guys. SRT. I'm not sure, you guys probably know in the comments. Here, there's something for you guys to comment on. Does the scat packs only say SRT and then the Hellcats have the Hellcat logo or could you get a Hellcat with just SRT in the seat? I'm not sure, but either way, they say SRT on them. And they're the matching suede that the original ones were. And Dennis over here is zippity doo dye. With the fakita. 
<laughs> Fakita. <laughs> if you guys are wondering what Fakita is, the fake Fakita. <laughs> nice green. <laughs> it's a nice green Fakita. <laughs> nice green Fakita. Well, I think we have them loose. Yeah, loose. Feels like something's attached, maybe. We well, got your seatbelt here still. We don't need that where we're going. I feel like there's something more here. One more? Maybe? No. I don't think so. Oh, they're just stuck together. Hey. Alright. So we're gonna assess which ones look better or worse out of all these. And we'll go from there. Let me get these out. <laughs> That's why this car didn't burn to the ground. I found sweet baby Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> that just fell out of the seat. All right, so it's kind of a Dennis referred to as a coin toss on which rears are better. Fronts is definitely not even a comparison if you guys I think have seen the original that stuff. Is definitely better. Yeah, like this. This is all like scratched up. Yeah, this one, this one's mint right here, whereas this one's got a bunch of uh, spugats and Previous stuff. Sins. <laughs> Jesus had his eyes closed for those ones. <laughs> 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 Close your eyes, Jesus. Uh, yeah, I think these ones are gonna be better. They both, regardless, they all need to be cleaned, but anyways, uh, should we hang the rears? Yeah. Might as well, even just throw them in. It'll be easier now with no front seats. Yeah, we'll throw them in loose with the Fakita. <laughs> we'll throw the fronts in. All right, let's go. Hey, check that out. We got this thing starting to look pretty spicy in here. So we got this in here. We just powered everything up for a sec. We just plugged it in. Hey, yeah. she's got a little bit of sand in that track, but she going. Ooh. <laughs> I think it needs to sound a little better than that, but. All right, so now I can put the front bolts in. But I had to move it back so I could do that. I wonder if I move it around a little more if it'll get the sand out of it. Maybe it's a yeah, she sounds a little greedy. All right, let me crank these bolts in here and then uh, we'll see what she's got. So that's gonna be a wrap for this video, you guys. So I'm trying to get these videos out for you guys as much as possible, but I am working on multiple projects and I'm trying to just work on this in my spare time when I can. But you guys will be happy and excited to know. One side note, you might have noticed the seats are in there because I'm kind of filming and getting ahead of myself before each episode comes out. You guys will be excited to know though that I'm gonna be working pretty soon here. And even though these episodes are coming out probably two, three weeks behind of when I'm actually doing this, but I am working on the engine. So the reason why we haven't put the engine back in is because I have the engine on the stand right there. And I've been talking with a few companies and we are gonna be building the engine before it goes in. So I'm super excited about that. Not only is this thing gonna be obviously Hellcat powered, but we're gonna end up camming it, probably do rods and pistons so that we can throw a ton of boost at this engine. And it's gonna make well over a thousand horsepower right from the get go. I also picked up some headers for this thing. So this thing is gonna be spicy right at the turn of first key. So. I'm really excited, but before you guys take off, go ahead over to shopboosted.com. We've got all kinds of merch over there. I've got shirts, I've got key tags, I've got all sorts of stuff. We've got some products over there. And also if you guys need help with your Hellcat or Hemi swap, I've got consultations over there for you guys. I've got your back and we can help you guys remotely get your swap sorted out. But anyways, thanks for watching. If you guys haven't seen all the videos of how we've got this burnt Hellcat looking how you see it here, go check out the previous videos. They are super interesting. You guys would never know based on how the car looks right now, how it looked before. So go check that out. Thanks for watching. Give it a thumbs up before you take off. We'll see you guys on the next video.